Blake, welcome to the Jehu Garcia podcast. Welcome to our podcast. Cool. It's Friday night with uh, Jehu and Blake, and we're hanging out at wherever we are. <laughs> well, yeah, remotely. We're doing the Zoom thing because these, this new world, right? The new reality. Exactly. That, uh, actually, no, we would be doing this like this anyways because you're in Florida and I'm in California. So, uh, Very true. Yeah. I mean, I mean, not always. Uh, you never know. Maybe I would start bringing some some guests here, but yeah, it's likely that we would have been doing this anyways like this. But yeah, it's uh, pretty strange times that we're living, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> but nonetheless, I'd want to talk to people that are doing cool stuff, and um, I'm having some very strong guests in my podcast so far. So far, we're we're getting. A lot I, I've been working out for that. <laughs> You've been working out. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so for those who don't know, why don't you tell us a little bit what you what you're up to, uh, where you've been, yeah. and where you're going? Yeah, cool. So I think we should start with how you and I actually met, which was in Austin, which is a a wonderful town, and it may or may not be the next headquarters for Tesla, but that's not exactly why we met. Uh, we did meet there because there's a racetrack there. And I love racetracks. So we met at Coda during the fully charged live event. And I was out there to take some hot laps in my Tesla Model S, which was the car that I set the record for Pikes Peak in 2016. And offered some crazy people a ride. And you're one of those crazy people that decided to get in with me and still survive. So, Yeah, that was a crazy ride. Uh, that was pretty amazing. Uh, felt like a roller coaster. Yeah, I was hoping to actually have a screenshot of your face because <laughs> there was a certain point where you're in like a selfie and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the next quarter, but this is a good shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. Um, yeah, I don't think never anybody's ever felt the power of a, the real power of a Tesla. Not until yeah. you get behind a wheel with someone that knows what they're doing. So it was definitely, yeah. you know, it was definitely an eye opening for me. I was like, holy crap, these things are pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, and what's interesting too is like the number of conversions that are going on right now. You know, if we take the Tesla motor and we put it in a car that is, you know, kind of a historic car, it, it creates something that is more than it originally was. It's something that's very special. But at the same time, because Tesla first put the cars to market with what I would consider to be comfortable, uh, all season tires slash performance tires that weren't necessarily like, a, an AMG or an M car, when you finally put a real set of racing rubber on the car, it comes yeah. alive. And that, that's part of what everybody was really excited about was, wow, these cars actually handle well too. They're not just the fastest thing in a straight line. <laughs> yeah, and it's a heavy car, so yeah. you would think that, uh, yeah, you think that it wouldn't be able to do that, but right, it, it does. Once you put the- Yeah, it, it, it's- it's one of those physics lessons where you go, okay, all right, there's mass, but if you put it in the right place, it can still do the right things. It's kind of like the way that the Nissan GTR was. Yeah. It was one of the first cars that was super heavy that everybody's like, how did that just beat me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. But that was like all wheel drive, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the GTR was all wheel drive. It relied on technology. It was what I consider to be, kind of the internal combustion car predecessor to a Tesla, meaning that it showed that if you use technology and weight distribution the right way, you can have a heavier car that still goes faster than a lighter car, which is very anti-Colin Chapman, you know, which yeah. is always like, oh, I'm going to make things as light as possible, which that was always my philosophy. And I still yeah. hold to that. But there are some times where you can use weight to your advantage. Think yeah. sumo wrestler. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Godzilla, right? Didn't that call that? Exactly. <laughs> Godzilla. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a pretty iconic car. I remember being like amazed by one of those. Kind of rare, right? There's not a ton of them. I mean, it's really expensive. Yeah. It's a $100,000 car. It was expensive at one time. Once you start yeah. going with the Teslas, you're like, ah, it's $100,000. That's just, you know, another Tesla. <laughs> well, you know what's crazy, too, when we talk about prices of cars? Um, when I was at, at, at Virginia International Raceway, just a couple weeks ago, the only destination charger near my hotel was a Chevrolet dealership. Okay. So I kind of like snuck the car in at midnight, backed it in and plugged it into, I believe, a charger that was destined for a Bolt and or a Volt. 
but there was nobody around. So I went ahead and plugged it in because, yeah, that got me ready for the next day. And I, I covered my car. On the way back, I'm walking by all of the new trucks and I'm going, oh my God, that truck's 80 grand. That truck's 85 grand. You know, it just, it blows me away. And, and you can see why there's such a mass appeal for the cyber truck because the trucks in, in the market right now are 40 to 100 grand. Yeah. It, 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 it's surprising. And I, I had that happen when I talked to somebody about the Model 3 the other day that we're building. And they're like, oh, those Teslas, they're like all oh, like $100,000 and above, right? I'm like, no, you can get like a Model 3 for like 35 grand. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think the perception's changed. Yeah. Yeah. I got mine for about 40, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, fully financed for like 45 or something. And so I'm, you have a Model 3 now? I have a Model 3, yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't do that. And then I'm just getting the 3,500, 3,700 tax credit. So, oh, nice. yeah. So if you really think about it, yeah, it's, it's, it's very close to like things like 38,000 or something that I'm going to end up paying for it. Because my wife also got a $2,000 check in the mail from some other third party company. And then she got a $2,500 check from Southern California Edison. So if you really, it's so crazy. I'm like five, six, almost like over $8,000 in. So, so why did she get, I mean, if you don't mind me asking questions here, why did she get a check from the power company? Is it because it's kind of like paying it forward and they know they're going to get it back? Or is it some kind of like, we don't know about it yet, but there's part of like this major grid. There's system. a ton of like these federal and state programs. And I asked her, I was like, because we were doing our taxes, right, this week or whatever. And then yeah. I was like, why did you get so many checks? Like, this is some serious money. Like, we totally lost out on the $7,500 credit, right? Because we didn't yeah. buy it early enough. By the time we got it, it had, had double or uh, half. But we still ended up close to $9,000 worth of credits and refunds and stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm like, how did you manage that? And she goes, well, I was just going to... She told me she's just going to work and there's a billboard and it's just SE Southern California Edison. If you have a uh, electric car, you know, file for a thing on this thing. And she went there and yeah. she filed and she was granted the $2,500 refund. And then Sweet. from there, she said she clicked on something else and it was a third party state grant wow. thing or whatever. So I'm like, wow, you just got us $9,000 out of her Tesla. That's so crazy. So, so the model you ended up getting was, because they don't have the two-wheel drives anymore. Do you have a two-wheel drive? No, I got bare, bare bottom. I think I just got... Yeah. Like, standard range double drive, right? Range. No, it's a, yeah. as far as I know, it's not double, dual motor. Uh, well, if it's, not, if it's not the rear-wheel drive, it's got to be a dual motor. Because, I mean, is it a 2020? I, it's a 2019. I believe well, it's... So my the understanding, I believe it's... Okay, I believe it's... Okay, so you have a rear-wheel drive one then? It might be just a regular standard range rear-wheel drive. Yeah. Well, yeah, so the, the, by the way, there isn't like a, oh, I just got the standard rear-wheel drive. <laughs> it's like, no, I got a rear-wheel drive car that goes zero to 60 in four and a half seconds, and it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> oh, it's an amazing car. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I was like, I was really thinking about it. Like, do we get the other one? Do we get... You know, but here's the thing. The reality of it is that I'm coming off of like four or five years of being just broke, barely scraping yeah. by, right? So we, for that long, we haven't had like a big car payment. So, you know, yeah. you're buying like a 40000 40, almost $50,000 car. You, like, wait, you're not going to pay the car payment again? What? <laughs> <laughs> So, so she's like, I'm, I'm a risk taker, right? I'm like, yeah, let's just get the top one and do the thing and be fun. Let's get a full autonomy on it. So when it turn it on, you know, but she's like, yeah. it's already $600 payment at the end of the month plus the tax plus the insurance. She's like, no, we're just going to get this. So I'm pushing the limit with her, right? I, it's it's good to company. have an, an accountant, an accountant and the entrepreneur in the family is a good mix. So you're good. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we got the bare bottom. And uh, it's, it's fine. She loves it. And I think now we are a year in it. And I put, I planted the seed the other day. I'm like, hey, the whys are out there. I think they fix a lot of the little issues that she doesn't like. I'm like, you, you might. 
We might have looked at. I have a what, what are the little issues that she doesn't like? What are they? There are little things uh, like they don't have a handle. So my parents are elderly and they go in there all the time and mm-hmm. they don't have somewhere to grab on. So I'm like, oh, I think maybe the, the Y is taller. So just mm-hmm. the, the physical dimensions of the car might work better for what she does. Uh, so what we, yeah, what we need got to do is we need, what's that? We need, we need to train her how to like kind of have your parents. Is it her parents or your parents? My parents, yeah. Yeah, so we have to have your parents like stand in a certain position. I'm going to train her how to kind of like drift with the doors open <laughs> and just scoop them in, right? So they're just standing there. They don't need to grab anything. The next moment they're sitting down like, whoa, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> It's kind of like um, the transporter. If you ever saw that, uh, you know, back in the days of uh, Clive Owen and Madonna, BMW put together this, oh, yes, uh, I saw that. This, yeah. this, this video where basically Madonna gets thrown out of the car. Yeah. We just need to kind of like wind that backwards and just put your parents in person. Yeah. Which by the way, that was a pretty awesome, uh, it was an ad, but it was more like a movie. Yeah, it remember? was, it was awesome. It was like a 10 I was working for BMW at the time, so I, I remember it really well as being like, that's super rad, I wish I got to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that too. And I think I appreciated it, uh, just the whole cinematic side of things. Because I was like, that's, yeah. not a, that's a commercial? I'm like, that's a mini movie. With two actors. Way better. Way, way way better. <laughs> yeah. And it's all about the car. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, so wait, so are there actually grab handles in the, in the Model Y then? I don't know. But I know that hmm. the physical dimensions would go more for all the little complaints that she's got about that. Yes, uh, it's less difficult to get in. And- yeah. And then the, she has also other little complaints like uh, her phone doesn't connect. Does she can't like text people? Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's been trying to think oh, from the screen or something. It's it's like buggy. Like she, she'll be like, "Hey, text uh, you know so and so, her sister or something," and then just the car won't do it. And she's like, "Why doesn't it do it?" And then she's like going through the menus and stuff. And then I'm like, "Well, I we don't know anybody else at the Model Three that we you know talk to on a regular basis, so I don't know if they're going with that same." Problem, yeah. but I'm like, yeah, I know that I, some of the reviews I've seen, they, they fix quite a bit of like little issues on, on the wire. Well, so you, you should reach out to Zach and Jesse because you know they they have multiple Model Threes in their their house, and that would help. But what's yeah. funny is that like I, I'm kind of like imagining a, a week of your wife having the original Model Roadster, which I had for a couple months, and kind of like, wait a second, the phone didn't connect at all. No. <laughs> once your once your parents are sitting in, which they would be sitting on each other's laps, by the way, they would never get back out. Because <laughs> yeah. like once you fall into the car, you kind of like need somebody to extract you back out of the original roadster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that pillar that goes on the side of the you would have to like yeah, and it, it's super low. Well. I mean, it's it, it's like an original Lotus, you know, back to Colin Chapman, where like everything is lightweight and you just drop somebody in and they're like oh this is pretty cool and then they go to get out and they're like how do i get out of this thing <laughs> yeah i've been in one yeah it was it was uh it was a struggle <laughs> it was a struggle, it was a, it was a struggle. <laughs> first world problem it was a struggle yeah. i was driving an electric sports car <laughs> yeah well i wasn't driving i was a passenger uh wow. yeah those were those those were expensive cars when they came out are where are they yeah, yeah. they where were like 100 they? 120 grand back in the day well, here's the thing, though. Now, almost like a hundred and twenty thousand dollar car doesn't seem that expensive. That's because you're in California, and every house is a million dollars. Every house has a Tesla too, so you're like, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. For a while, there's a lot of Model S's. Now, now it's almost hard to find the Model S's because there's so many Model Threes. It's so crazy. Yeah, uh, so the proliferation. Yeah, it's a different thing. No, it definitely changed <laughs> our perspective before. Electric cars, I thought like, you know, that like that Godzilla car, whatever, a hundred thousand dollars or the roads original, like that's, that's a car for like rich people. That's a car for, it's for those people that I don't know who they are. Right. But then all of a sudden we're like electric cars came in and then you're like, oh, I know a bunch of people in hundred thousand dollar cars. Well, I mean, think about this though. When you bought the hundred thousand dollar GTR, guess the other things you have to buy? Fuel. Mm Mm-hmm. You have to figure out the depreciation, right? It's a hundred grand when you buy it. You drive it off the lot; it's worth eighty grand. <clears throat> then you have to figure out maintenance. Then you have to figure out well, Teslas. You still have to figure out tires, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but but there's like 
there's so many other like compounding factors. It's like, you know, if you have an expensive all inclusive hotel or a condo, you just kind of like look at the number, the way that we look at Tesla's or an electric car, it's kind of like, Oh, okay. Well that, that, that's kind of the real money I have to spend. But then when you look at like the gas cars, you're like, well, I have to do this. It's like, it's like getting like a historic home where you're like, that's a really good deal. And then you're like, Oh crap. I have to like replace the floors or restore them. And then I have to do the piping and then I have to worry about like the electric, I mean, does it even have electricity everywhere? Does it, ha it only has like the window units for AC? I'm going to be hot. What do I do? You know, that's like old technology, new technology. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's a no. different cost factor. Yeah, definitely. And it was a car that had so much power and that you couldn't really drive it anywhere to the full potential unless you took it to the track. Right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, which, well, I get to do that a lot, so I'm, I'm fortunate, but. <laughs> That's not the normal thing. It's like the people who drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis to, to the store, to the grocery store. You're just like. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's like, you're not, it's, it's, it's not the right car. <laughs> That's the right tool for the job. It's like walking the horse around the stable. You're <laughs> like, I, I, you should be riding it. Don't just walk it around. So um, speaking of older cars, by the way, uh, last night, my significant other came home with our classic Mini Cooper, right? Okay. And she's like, you know what? It doesn't go in gear anymore. And I'm going, well, what happened? She's like, well, uh, you know, think that something's happened with the clutch. And I just kind of take my time and wait for the synchros and it goes in gear. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I start looking at it. I'm thinking as, as I'm trying to like troubleshoot, is it the cable to the transmission or is it hydraulic? Cause I actually don't know that in my mini Cooper cause I haven't serviced it. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, huh, I have a friend with a model three front motor and I have a mini Cooper. Well, she has a mini <laughs> it, it's her car. It's her car. Let's be honest. It's her car. Yes. I'm like, Hmm, that might work out well. And that's the thing is that we, well, at least I, I'm such a gearhead. I mean, I'm the person who grew up on like heel and toe downshifts and double clutching and like tuning a carburetor. And I was, I was raised by an older parent in the old ways that the, the things that Tesla and other people that are converting cars are doing, they're doing such a good job that I'm like, wow, am I literally just wasting my time? I, I don't know. I mean, it's... <laughs> It is something, and I'm really keen to like hear how your shop's working out and like how, how things are going with the conversions because I mean, and that's a lot to like suddenly go from like, okay, I'm working at my home, changing over things, and I've got some people helping out to like, okay, I've got an entire place, I'm gonna just start converting stuff. Well, it's still just my little conversion shop, it's just in a bigger, you know, place. But I actually, we started one two days ago, and it's a bay window. Okay, and cool. And we're dropping 14 modules of the Tesla Model S modules on the floor. So and that is, I'm trying to do the math. You probably have already done, like, what does that end up being? Is that like a 60 kilowatt hour? What does that end up being? Uh, like 80, right? Like two modules 80. off the original. So they're about, yeah, so 75 kilowatt hour. Okay. Yeah, same yeah. for one hour. And so that's probably, I don't know what's, but we're using the, we're going to use the Hyper 9 motor, which is okay. basically the same technology as the Model 3. It's a, you know, permanent mm -hmm. magnet reluctance motor. So you're probably looking at a couple hundred miles of easy driving. I think it's going to be more. I think it's going to be just over 100, uh, 200 miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So will, will it, I mean, I know you're in Southern California, which you are typically blessed with more arid climate and yeah. you know a little bit of a sea breeze it's still warm there but are you thinking air conditioning i mean what are you going to do to is it going to no. stay just kind of like all windows open just rolling yeah. down the street i don't okay. i don't know so it's not mine right and this guy wants it for traveling just to like yeah he's like a world traveler and he just i think he just wants to tour the u.s and he thought like well that's just, i want he's tired of these breaking down right he literally dropped like five thousand dollars in a motor, yeah. in a transmission, he rebuilt it. And then within less than 500 miles, the thing just dies or it's not working correctly. And then the shop doesn't mm -hmm. want to stand behind the work. So he's like, ah, forget this. Let's just, and then he sees me run around <laughs> in my electric car. You're like, <laughs> that idiot can do it. <laughs> yes. I'm going to pay him to figure out my problems because, you know, I need to simplify. 
Yeah, so he's he dumped about he he spent about twenty thousand dollars buying parts, right? Ten grand worth of mm -hmm. that, and then ten thousand dollars worth of like everything else. So it's, it's going to be an investment. I mean, worst case scenario, you just put it into like, you know, a storage in your house. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, no, he's going to have a car that's going to be driving for the next 20 years, I think. Yeah. I don't think those batteries, I, you know, those batteries are not going to degrade. Uh, yeah. And then we're actually going to try and make it so that it fast charges. Cool. Be, so I go to Hunt. I say cool. Describe fast charge as to what you're expecting. Is it going to be a DC to DC fast charge, or is it yeah, going to be a Chatmo? Yeah, Chatmo. Yeah, Chatmo. So I mm -hmm. think we'll be able to do around that voltage because it's like 175 volts. Dominant. Okay. I think at that voltage level we can do like 30 kilowatt. I think charging something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, uh, pretty easily. So that's not you know that's not bad. As opposed to the onboard charging level two, which is going to be five kilowatt, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like 80 miles an hour back into yeah. it, you know? If, yeah. and I, are there a lot of Chatamo stations in Southern California? I haven't, like, looked for those because when I was in Southern California last time, everything was very Tesla sp specific. So I don't know, like, what you have out there. Uh, I think so. Um, well, let's look in the map here. Uh, I have, do you have that? I have that, right? Or what's it called? Right, Sherry? No. Oh, it's plug share. Okay. Yeah, so I used that when I was at VIR. And by the way, if anybody from that architecture is watching this, I apologize. I meant to call you because <laughs> your stuff doesn't work at VIR. What is that? So VIR is Virginia International Raceway, and wow. it is just a little bit north of North Carolina. It's a beautiful track. And mm -hmm. Nissan actually stepped up and sponsored – having a Chatamo station there, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Oh. So I had to literally turn the AC off and sweat my off at 40 miles an hour, driving to a supercharger an hour away so that I could finish my afternoon driving session. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Oh. So here's all the, uh, that's all the, I, see all, I see all the fault lines and the earthquakes about to happen. I don't see <laughs> I don't see. Yeah. I don't see. Uh, this is uh, LA area, and uh, yeah, I see about twenty different stations. Of, that's uh, so Spanish. Everything starts with La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. So there's. Oh one wait. Bit. I mean, yeah. I have one. I have two around my house. One in Montclair and one in Rancho Cucamonga. Do you have to pay for the the Chatamo ones, or are they all free, like with the plug share? Okay. So uh, okay. So here's the problem. The problem is that they're all Nissan. Uh, mm -hmm. Nissan, um, what is that? The uh, dealers. So yes. you might not be able. Oh, to no, no, you're just, you're just going to inquire about a new car. You want to buy a new internal combustion engine. Yeah. You want to buy the best thing in the lot. here while I watch your. Yeah, I, I can't yeah. even put a deposit on a GTR, you know, or a three seventy Z. You might have plugged my piece of crap uh, electric car over there, because <laughs> you guys don't care about that, right? I mean, I, I know you're going out of business, but it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, so well, that's wait, the problem. I, I, I don't mean to hate Nissan, by the way. Nissan, Nissan, I'm a big fan. They, <laughs> no, I actually am. Don't, don't no. laugh. Don't laugh. Okay. They, you know, some companies have an opportunity, and then they don't fulfill it. Yeah. That's the best way I can say it. I mean, with Nissan, I built the first hybrid race car in North America. I mean, 2007, we we're at the LA Auto Show, like debuting a hybrid race car. 2007, dude, that's like so OG with everything else, right? Yeah. And they, they were at that curve. I mean, granted, that was so like a carb standard slash government thing because they only okay. sold that car to huge, you know, certain markets. And granted, I was doing that while I was also drifting cars professionally for Nissan, which wow. was kind of like, you know, the good, like kind of like the bad devil and the good devil or good angel over his shoulder kind of thing like here's a hybrid race car here's a drift car um but no i mean nissan nissan had a chance i mean they had a, a loyalist group with the leaf and, yeah. and and that was out when the regular tesla roadster was out there was no model s there was there was the leaf mm -hmm. and you know yes it was a third car for most people but it still would have been something that it still would have been something that if they had doubled down on it as opposed to other things they did. Yeah. I mean, no, it was, look, 
great motor, but everyone whatever. was driving Leafs for a long time. It was the car. Well, the Prius. Leaf or Prius? Leaf or Prius? The, the Prius was the iconic one where, like, didn't matter who you were, you were making a statement. You were like, look, I care about the earth. I'm progressive. I'm going to drive this yeah. crappy car. <laughs> <laughs> and the Leaf was like, I like electric cars and I don't care about styling. <laughs> yes, at all. I'm cool enough. I'm secure by, enough by my manhood. I'll drive this ugly car. <laughs> yeah, I have a really cute dog in the car with me. So if anybody has a problem, <laughs> I'll just whip the yeah. dog out and everybody loves me. <laughs> but didn't they go down because cause the CEO was just kind of yeah. like, didn't know what he was doing? Uh, no, I think he knew exactly what he was oh, doing yeah. for his he's own running, interest. <laughs> he's running from the law right now, right? He's hiding somewhere in Europe or somewhere. No, yeah, it, uh, he's in South America, I think. I think, I've never been to South America. I guess he's doing better than me. <laughs> no, no, they're looking for him. Like, they, he actually escaped Japan. Like, they, he smuggled himself out of Japan. So, yeah. uh, and then he went to, I think he's in Brazil or something. And they're, I mean, they're looking for him. Or, I don't know. Like, I mean, what a, poor, what, what a poor life to lead. You know, you're like a multi-billionaire in Brazil. I think you're doing all right. I, I think so. I mean, unless, until they catch you. Like, uh, right? <laughs> well, hey, you know what? We, we could speculate all we want, but the, the unfortunate thing is that despite all of that power and despite all of that intelligence, it's not being used for everybody else's good. Yeah. And that's a shame. That's a darn shame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you're right. Nissan could have been ahead of the game, but they just didn't. They, I don't know what they were doing. They were, like you're saying, they're using all the resources for some other projects and they didn't. Yeah, I mean, whatever happened to Better Place? I mean, goodness gracious. Yeah. That's, place? that's really old school thoughts there, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, also went belly up, right? We used all their batteries. We, you know, we were with Jack Rickard and stuff. He bought a bunch of Better Place batteries and they yeah. were selling them and people were putting them in other cars and Which, all that stuff. I, I, recall they, I recall when they did the PR with Carlos and the CEO and or I think maybe one of the co-founders for Better Place. And it was like, I was watching going, this is awesome. Like, wait, you know? I mean... Yeah. If we can't put charging stations everywhere, yeah. let's at least get some waypoints. And yeah, there's a lot of logistic problems with it. But and the, for those who don't, don't least, know what we're talking about, it's uh, the Better Place was like this company. Was it in Israel? Yeah, yep, they, they Israel. were Israeli. Yeah. And they yeah. were doing these cars that had swappable batteries. So they, you could go to a place and then you drop it and then you put a new one that's fully charged and then you drive away. Which was um, similar to, where was it on I-5? When I first bought my Model S, I drove from LA up to San Francisco and just about uh, near Buttonwillow. No, maybe it was actually closer up the five, like to Redlands area or like not quite Redlands. Um, where was the battery swap that they did? They had the one. First? They had one. Very, small, but I don't they had a very small window of opportunity. I literally like... I was like some stalker. Like I drove up and like, this is it. Here's the little hut. And I was like getting my flashlight out and like camera. I'm like, hey, there's the bay. And 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 that point I kind of felt a little like queeze in my stomach of like, wow, I just bought a Model S that was really expensive. I'm about to go to Pikes Peak and be a brand ambassador for this company. <laughs> and is it a sham? I mean, like whole battery swap thing, you know, like, is it a better place version 2.0? Like, am I about to like go up Pikes Peak in four months? and promote this company and then six months later eh, it's out of business well and here's <laughs> the weird part about that it's that every single model s has that technology built in yeah you literally have those bolts that come off the, the battery comes off now yeah. apparently talking to x like tesla uh submissions it's a nightmare like it it didn't the, the, like it's, it's 80 percent there like yeah. there's still like those connectors weren't made to disconnect many times. Aligning mm -hmm. them up, turns out it's a giant pain, right? Uh, yes. We needed to refine that technology to actually make it workable. But the the you know eighty percent was there. Like that battery was designed to go up and down. It's got giant connectors that come off. It was just the little ones. Well, uh, like for, for example, I mean, and this is this this is the fun of like all of us not knowing what we don't know, right? So like. This little fun LG cell, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's not the exact same cell that's in the Model 3. But if you look at data sheets for this over time, it's like, 
even the manufacturers of new chemistry and new form factors don't always know what is going to happen in the real world. You know, so if you look at like, if you look at somebody in JB's world or Elon's and they're working off the information they have, they go, okay, these 18650s are supposed to have a calendar life of five years to 10 years and a cycle life, according to the Panasonic chemistry that we licensed, maybe 300 cycles, maybe 500. If we went with like a lithium iron phosphate, yeah, we might get a thousand cycles, right? Yeah. And, and thank goodness that they cloud connected every BMS because if they didn't, they could have been like every other company going down like this war path of we got to do battery swapping. We've got to do like maintenance every three years. Like, wow. and what's crazy is that the software updates, if you look at the history of charging and, and one of my friends was one of the patent holders for the supercharger, their entire algorithm was based on a ramp, a spike. And okay, I don't want to go too much into confidential stuff, but basically it, it was based on a, a new way of thinking of the old information, mm -hmm. right? And so, so it was at 20 to 80% charge in 30 minutes, you know, 0.5 C up yeah. to that point. Then as they got more metadata and they got more road miles of all these Model S's, they're like, well, wait a second, we can ramp up the charge rate like almost right away at 10%. And then we can, I'm going to viewers left, decline, <laughs> you know, decline over a state of charge. And that would never have happened without having the entire mass of information, right? Yeah. It's just like Google. I mean, Google knows all about how to advertise to us as humans yeah. and how to feed us information based on metadata. And Tesla knows how to feed the batteries. And, and that to me is like that big thing of like, well, I was concerned about the battery swap. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have been. Yeah, they're, they're really past that. Why, why would you battery swap? I mean, my car, I don't have to worry about having somebody else's used battery. Yeah. And, yeah. and we just went to, uh, just kind of going on a tangent here, but we went to Sebring last weekend and my car has 55,000 miles on it now. Mm -hmm. And I ran the same. <laughs> or not really. Well, uh, say again. Are they all hard miles? Like, uh, like you're all uh, racing or are they, or are they normal I mean, what, average miles? You know, it's kind of like an all or nothing. <laughs> I go from like racer to grandma. Oh, I, I mean, I seriously do. I, I go from like, I'm at the racetrack and I'm, or I'm doing something crazy. Then I go into like, how do I get 200 watt hour per mile? You know, <laughs> like, yes. like I'm like hyper miling on a daily basis, <laughs> okay. you know? Then when I go to the track, I'm like, all right, I want to get the most efficiency, but it is what it is. And the thing that blew me away is that I ran the exact, I did a little test this last weekend, which I can't, just I can't reveal until after Pike's Peak how the test went, mm -hmm. but I did a comparison between the Model S and the Model Three at Sebring, right? And and Florida, you've been here. It, it's as flat as a whiteboard laid down, right? <laughs> you can okay. draw whatever you want on it. It's flat. Okay. Sebring has I think an elevation change of maybe three feet, but <laughs> okay, but. But it does have a an almost one mile back straight and a three quarter mile front straight, which in three point seven miles that you drive around, you are on throttle an equal amount of time, even though there isn't a grade, as you would be at Pikes Peak, and the temperatures and the humidity is higher. Yeah. So you have better cooling, but you have more air resistance. You have, yeah. I mean, without getting super complicated, it's a good test of. Hey, if I drove 12 and a half miles, which is Pike's Peak length, in a car from standing start, and I do the best to cover that distance over a certain amount of time, how do the cars compare? And I ran the Model S at the exact same strategy I ran Pike's Peak, and I was like, huh, it still has it. It still goes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, it was really impressive how the car still maintains itself and at, with 55,000 miles, it still has a bit more range than the Model 3. Yeah. So it's, it's 55,000 miles and, and what the, the calendar like? This is a... Yours is a so it was a late 2015 production. Oh, yeah. That's, that's quite a bit of years. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. I mean, it's five years, you know, and in yeah. Florida, which the good news about Florida is that we don't get huge temperatures. You know, we're not going to hit freezing temperature. Yeah. You're always like, well, it doesn't like matter. Car, that car yeah. is always keeping those cells 
Um, ten, yeah. Yeah. So, the, you know, it, it did really well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So five-year-old cells with 55,000 miles. Now, it's easy. Is it easy to come to try to figure out how many cycles you've had on those? Oh, I know. I actually know that. Um, I don't Ooh. have in front of me. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Why? Because you've calculated or because you've, you've looked down in the software and... Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I know exactly. And what's interesting is the difference. And so my car, um, up until recently, had a lot more DC charging. Ah, okay. Yeah. Like so, 60%. Sure. 60%. Yep. 60% Ooh. supercharging. Yeah. Wow. So you super <laughs> I was one of the first limited people. <laughs> what do you, you mean? Recall, remember, 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 like, I, I don't want to call it, like, limit gate, but, like, there was, like, this, like, whole thing where, like, if you had a Model S and you had free supercharging, you just lived on the supercharger. You're like, why would I pay my power company? Yeah. I bought a hundred thousand dollar car. I get free supercharging. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like just, and, and they built a supercharger in my town oh. and I, and the car was in San Francisco for the majority of its life. And thanks to some friends who helped out our race effort, I let them use the car for a while. Wow. So like the car was always being supercharged mm -hmm. until basically the last year and a half. So it had a lot of uh, DC kilowatt hour. But what do you, do you mean? So they throttled you? Is that? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it was about, uh, gosh, time goes by fast. I think it was about two years ago. They, they used to just have, you know, the superchargers be regular, no matter if you were a pay customer, a new customer, whatever. It was all, all the same and, and my car would actually charge at about 120 kilowatt rate 125 and right now it won't do anything more than 80 or 90 and it is not due to the degradation it literally was like an overnight when the software update hit and it pinged like if you were too frequent at the supercharger for free it would <laughs> throttle it back I, I know. so you're saying there are you can get another uh, identical you you believe that they can get another identical model s and supercharge at faster rates uh yes so i think it's unique to your vin number to your yeah it is it is because i i i kind of confirmed that with some people at tesla and it it may not be true as of this exact recording because mm -hmm. i haven't done it a versus b but i can tell you that within a one week period it went from at my local supercharger at the same state of charge the same mileage all things considered it didn't matter which bay i went to it was down by about 20 percent. 20 percent. yeah now like and, 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 and here's the thing it might have also and i'm going to be a devil's advocate it might yeah. have also been paving the way to allow for what was the generation two supercharger stations to accommodate for f the fast charging of the model three because the model three freaking rips i mean like i've got a whole new strategy like i show up at and i have to thank kyle from out of spec motoring for this one but i literally show up to the supercharger like famished so to speak like you ever you ever see somebody who's like super hungry at the buffet and they just like eat freaking everything that's like how my model three is like i roll in like four percent six percent okay. and i'm at 150 kilowatt 120 whatever the supercharger will do yeah. it's just maxing and i mean well, you go wait, in but i thought i thought it didn't it wouldn't you, you'd have to preheat your battery you'd have to have a bunch of like a bunch of things set well, in place so that it would charge at full speed well, so, so I, do, I do set my, besides a better route planner or route planner, depending on which side of the border you're at, but besides, yeah. besides setting that route plan, I would set my, my route on the navigation so it knows that I'm going to a supercharger. And, and the car it, does that. It, it starts preheating. Oh, I see. I see. Yep. Okay. So you're just doing all the things, checking all the boxes so that you make sure yeah. you get there. So I, I preheat, I plug in, and by the time I've got my COVID mask on, I run in, grab some water, use the restroom, wash my hands for 30 seconds or more. <laughs> try to not answer too many, try not to answer too many questions about the race car that's out there at the supercharger. By yeah. the time I get back, I'm at between 30 to 40 percent, and I'm good to go to the next supercharger, which is 100 miles away. Wow! It's like bam, bam, bam. Yeah. It so I don't totally get that. See, I don't get that because I have the low model. 
So yeah. I don't, I don't get the super. I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen over. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen over a hundred kilowatts on mine. I think the max I've ever seen is ninety, which, which is still impressive. Because if you, well, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, believe all of them have the same. I mean, you could, you no, would know this more. Than I would. Is it physically a hundred percent proven that way, or is it just software? Oh no, it's a small battery. The cells. So okay. it's it's a ninety six s. So the full batteries are forty six parallel cells, and okay. and the standard mid range is uh, forty six. I I want to say it's like thirty two cells or something. Yeah, there's quite a bit of cells missing. So, so I mean, so are they actually like a forty five hundred milliamp hour then? Uh, I, mean, I, you measure, I measure over five thousand milliamp hours, but of course, I did that from four point four point one to three volts, right? So full range voltage mm -hmm. of a cell, and it gave me over five thousand milliamp hours. Yeah. Well, I'm just uh, I'm making dinner plans, by the way. Um, huh. it, it it's, it's nine o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, here on the East Coast, um, it, you know it's interesting. So one of the things that you you and I have to talk about we haven't talked about Pikes Peak we haven't talked about the record <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we could go for hours I know um, so touching on a few things and then and then we've got to reconvene so Pikes Peak just announced I got some messages in the last twenty four hours there are going to be no spectators at Pikes Peak this year that's right I think that's going to be which weird. I feel really bad for everybody because it's such a spectator event I mean it's something where but I went there. In some ways, it might be better, right? Because I've seen some pretty close calls. <laughs> well, you haven't seen my videos. I mean, literally, I almost hit people like multiple times. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. So, so yeah. how do you want to have to worry about that? I think. Yeah, I, and, and here's the thing. I actually, I feel better too because I think it's the, I, I would far, I think it's a far better thing for them to rely on what is the new technology platforms of showcasing the event. Mm -hmm. And allow for the racers who have worked so hard and the sponsors and, and with us, we were the first community sponsored car that I know of. I mean, uh -huh. like I, Toyo tires has stepped up now and finally provided some tires, which is amazing. Cause like all of my wins and my records at Pikes Peak have been on Toyo outside of that. We have BC racing that provided suspension. However, we may or may not be able to run that because it, it may or may not fit within the production class rules. We're still, it's still to be determined, but outside of that, what would be our normal corporate sponsors? They have all been just trying to make payroll or trying to stay alive. So um, thanks to Zach and Jesse, like kind of helping promote this out there. We actually have over 150, I think now community sponsors wow. that have helped step up and get their name on the car. So it's like a, it's like a team effort, which is super rad. Yeah. Um, but so 100, I mean, over a hundred entities is, is pitched into yeah, 100, 100 individuals. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, their 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 name here. Look, I'm gonna grab this real quick. Sorry, we're moving. We're moving along here. <laughs> yeah. Let me uh, let me grab this real quick, and I'll show you. So we're gonna head out and look at the car. Real quick. Oh, and, and this is the Model Three that you're gonna be racing at Pikes Peak. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a, it's a little dark in the shop here. And um, oh, by the way, you haven't seen this, but this is actually the 2002 winner. Ah. Okay which is based on a Honda Civic VX, which was, besides the Honda CRX HF, was the most fuel efficient car at the time. Wow. And we ended up putting a, a Japanese spec motor in. It still got like 40 miles per gallon. And oh. yeah, we, we got Rookie of the Year in 99 and 2002 we won. It's, it actually kills bugs fast. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like back to the BMW ads, right? Yeah. Um, super dark in here. Let me, uh, let me switch some lights on real quick. Sorry, we're in the back of the shop here. Yeah, so this will be the first Model 3 that has entered the race, the Pike Speaker. Yes, race? it is the first Model 3 that entered the race, and it will be, we're going for the production class record. We're trying to turn the lights on here. Record, which means that it's not heavily modified. It's got, it's minimally modified, maybe a few things. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is meant to be a production car. It's meant to be a production car. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically, it's basically a car that is, a production class like with my model s it's mostly safety focused let me see if I yeah so that means he, he has to put a cage uh you're you're willing you're able to run race tires though right 
Well, uh, they're supposed to be DOT tires. Which is which means that they're tires you can drive on the street. So okay. they are ones that are a softer compound, but they are not, not slick tires. Yeah, not uh, okay. <laughs> I should grab a flashlight here. Goodness gracious. But anyways, it, uh, this is the worst worst camera for this. I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll wait until the lights to light up. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you got one of those that takes a while to start. Yeah. Look at these beasts. They're like, we're warming up. We're warming up. <laughs> here they go. They're they're getting there. They're getting there. Yeah, so like all of these little squares as, as the lights come on here, it's kind of like uh, the great reveal, right? Um, we're getting there. there we oh, go. yeah, and those are yeah, those all, all, all of the squares are mm -hmm. individuals who have stepped up and each donated the same amount. To oh, be on the card. oh, what it what does it take to, to put our name on there? Uh, one million dollars. <laughs> Actually, so so each each square. Um, gosh, am I allowed to say this? I, I guess I am. I mean, it's not like. Well, I mean, if you I, want to get some more, you know, everybody pays the same amount. It's on. If you go to electricperformance.t, you'll see the cost. But I can tell you this: it's way less than five hundred bucks. It's way less than normal. Like, like something this size on a race car for Pikes Peak, typically would be between like, wow. Oh, Five hundred to two thousand dollars, because what what happens with a major race like Pikes Peak is that it's not necessarily the ROI on race day, because there's thirty thousand fans, which this year there's none. It's it's the fact that like cars that go race up there are part of history. Yeah, you know it it it's kind of like it, it's a a continuous effect where because it is the second oldest race in America. Yeah. what you're doing is part of the history and because this is you know the first model three to be entered up there it's yeah you're making history it's, it's part, yeah it's part of the whole deal so yeah so here's here's all the there you go so anybody watching and they're a fan of racing and stuff and you want to support this uh particular race then you can you can get your you know hey get your name on it away and then to having us your name on the car that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, for people that are, yeah, that are fans of this race. And yeah, this it's, is, this is a race for wanted. fans, right? This is not like, you know, like NASCAR. This guy, it's super oh, like. Gosh. Do, do you know how much a NASCAR sticker would cost for one of those? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're talking fifty to $100,000. Yeah. To, like, it's just, Daytona 500 has a bandwidth of, of people that view it during the race much larger than Pikes Peak. Yeah. Super it's commercial. A, yeah. Yeah, it, it, but it's a much younger race with a much higher risk factor. You know, like yeah. you could put your name on a Chevy and it's driving around, driving around, driving around and nothing can come of it. It's like, it, it, it literally is such a gamble. And like, yeah, I mean, th this is this is beyond kind of the ROI. I think everybody that's involved is really about the mission of yeah. helping what you and I love, which is tinkering, advancement of, of automobiles, advancement of batteries, learning, you know, yeah. like pushing that, the limit. Yeah we, yeah, we don't know what we don't know, and we're all in this together, you know? <laughs> yeah, and for those who don't know, because I think a lot of people watching this might not know what that race is, it's uh, it's it's in a hill up. Uh, how how high is it up there? It's like yeah, so, so, so Flor Florida might have hills. I mean, the highest place in Florida, I think, is in Tallahassee. It's like 300 feet, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, then there's, and then there's the Blue Ridge Mountains, which are like 5,000 feet. And then there's the Rocky Mountains, which most, there's a lot of what they call 14ers, right? Which is 14,000 feet. <laughs> yes. So, so Pikes Peak is one of those 14ers, which is a 14,100 foot plus mountain. We start at 9,000 feet and we end at a little bit over 14,100. Oh, wow. So the race itself is almost 4,000 feet up in elevation? From yeah, it's, it's over. It's over four thousand, and it's an average grade of about seven to eight percent. Yes. So this is a uh, race that takes place up there in the sky, in the mountains. It, it is. It is. It used to be called the race to the clouds. To the clouds, and it's a straight up. I mean, it's a windy road that goes up yeah. four thousand feet, and then it comes down. There's some part of the of the race. So we, we don't. We don't. We there's only one place that has a, any significant downhill. Oh, okay. So it's mostly up. Yeah. So, so you've got a hundred, I know it's all stats, but I, I know it really well because it's been something I've been doing for more than half my life. Um, it's 156 turns. 156. So, so for those who get car sick, yeah. Like, just and like, here's you know, the other thing. I'm going to stay at the hotel. 
Yeah, and the, the other thing is, like, it's up in the mountains. Like, there's not, like, cars often <laughs> go off the cliff, <laughs> off cliffs, off the edge of the road, and they just go down, you know? Uh, and there is parts of it when you're driving up there that you can't really see where the road is. Not at all, no. Yeah. I mean, there's, I would say, if I, if I, if I were to try to analyze it, between 70 to 85% of the road is blind. It's blind. Because yeah, it's going that, down, you're going up and your car is this way, so you're, you don't yeah. know what's, you can't see past like 50 feet in front of you, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, over, over 40% of the, of the time you're driving, you can look over the mountains and see other mountains and other towns and other lakes and just beautiful scenery, which you don't really want to be focusing on that when you're driving. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but the majority of what we consider to be as a racer, the anticipation factor or seeing around the corner, you, you don't get that. Um, it's similar to what a lot of racers don't like about street courses where they're all concrete and you can't see, you have to like memorize the course and you know, it's dangerous because there might be a wreck ahead or in Pike's peak world, a spectator or. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people. Um, yeah. But the majority you can't see. And the other thing that's really not good about, Pike's Peak from a standpoint of memorizing it, is that there are multiple corners that kind of feel like another corner. Because when I went there as a rookie, um, yeah, there was, there was multiple corners where I thought I was somewhere else and I had to kind of second guess it. And I mean, a great example, and, and Randy, don't hate me for this, but uh, Randy Popes, who's a, a really well-known, amazing driver, taking nothing away from his driving skill whatsoever. Um, he had an off in the aforementioned GTR. He just drove straight off the cliff. And the reason being is the space that he was at. I mean, literally that corner looks like multiple other corners that you come hustling into. You're like, I know exactly where I am. I am at turn 55. Nope. You're at turn 45. Yeah. You're going off. <laughs> yes. And and it just, it catches you out so much. And it it, it is something where, Experience pays dividends as well as um, patience pays dividends. And that's something that I think paid dividends for us with the Model S is that when we did testing, we did not try to uh, go full out the entire run. We, we had a very specific strategy and it was more like playing a chess game slash a golf game where you're trying to make the least amount of picks. Yeah, it's not full on throttle no. to the pedal like yeah, it, yeah, there's quite a bit of strategy going because you, your your car would not survive. Well, yeah. and then you would go off the cliff too, <laughs> right? There's multiple well, I mean, reasons why you couldn't go all out. Yeah, I, I think that I think the number one fallacy slash misunderstanding of anybody who's not an EV person versus the reality of us racing Teslas is that it is never and or seldom about the amount of capacity left in the battery. Mm -hmm. Meaning that when we got to the top of Pike's Peak, we still had over 50% battery left. Okay. People think, oh, well, you held back because of that. No, there's so many other factors at play. Yeah, yeah and one of them is uh, it's uh, cooling, right? We talked uh, extensively yeah. when we met about the, the cooling problems that a – a production vehicle has they're not made to be driving for 12 <laughs> minutes uh, you know in that level of you know intensity right so this just uh, well, you know, like how many of us, i'm gonna make a car that goes up like speak as fast as it exactly. can exactly i mean show, show me a human that can without sweating run up a eight percent grade on a treadmill for 12 minutes yeah no i, I don't know many you know, so like we, we each have our own cooling system. We each can do our own limits. And I think that for the cars that we have, it's a continuous progression. And what I do love is that Tesla finally put track mode on the cars, which I hope, I hope that in a good Big Brother watching that anybody who's putting in track mode, they're actually hypersensitive to that data to be able to improve the cars. That would be just amazing. And I think I'm going to pause myself there because it's now 9-11, which speaking of Porsches, <laughs> yeah, there you go. we're going to have to pause there and we have to regroup because I've got to run. Okay. All right. Well, hey, listen, uh, I hope you do great in this race. When is this race happening? So it's August 30th. August 30th. It, was, it would have originally been in about a week and a half. 
but it has been pushed back. It's pushed but back. it's in August 30th. And I did look it up, actually. It's interesting. I thought at first it would be hotter. Um, it's going to be about the same temperature. So I think it's going to be a really interesting race. I think it's going to be yeah. neat to see how Where we do. Where can people um, watch that? So yeah. I know that on Pike's Peak YouTube channel, which I think it's like PPIHC. I don't know what their exact YouTube channel is. I think they're going to live stream it. I'm hoping that they will allow us on the Electric Performance channel to uh, also live stream maybe my efforts. That's your, that's your particular channel. You have your own YouTube yeah. channel. Yep. Okay. So you, you're thinking yeah. that you might be able to broadcast it. I'm, I'm hoping we'll be able to live stream it. I know that we have worked out a deal with Toyo helping sponsor us to purchase the licensing rights to where after the race, which a little bit of patience, we should be like, it's there a battery issue. Um, <laughs> battery that, that after, after the race, we should be able to uh, allow everybody to see lots and lots of content of the onboard footage. And yeah, I mean, it's, there's going to be a few different items. So what I'll do is I'll send you some links and hopefully everybody else can follow along and see what's happening. Well, I hope you do great. And uh, yeah, I, maybe you can come back and, and tell us all about how that race went because it's an exciting thing. And it's your first time that it's doing it and you hold, you currently hold that record and you're going yes. out you're trying to beat your own record, right? Yeah. It's, it's one of the, it's, it's one of those bettering thyself deals, but uh, yeah. Are you going to beat your own record if you have to guess? Um, I say that there's a very good chance, okay. but I neither control the weather nor do I control much else besides what I do. The machine the more capable. The machine has the potential. The it has the potential. It's a more capable machine this time around. Is it I incremental? So, yeah. Is it incremental? Um, better? How about this? In, in, in our testing, under certain circumstances, it's a huge difference. Oh. Under other unique circumstances it may not be better. And that is what, that is what has got my entire group. It has my entire group kind of going, Oh, we have more to learn. Yeah. So it's the unknown. <laughs> I, believe, I believe there's improvement. I do believe there's improvement. Um, you know, if you drag race the two cars, the model three will lose. Yeah. If you drag race them in a quarter yeah. mile, the model three is slower. Wow. But, but this is not a drag race though. <laughs> exactly we and, and that speak. that is what makes it so interesting and that that is what keeps me at the edge of my seat so to speak yeah. meaning that i have a job to do not just rest on my laurels you know yeah. and hang out well i i hope everything goes good for you and uh yeah hopefully you get a new record and uh yeah but even more exciting than that is i want to come drive one of your cars <laughs> oh yeah we, <laughs> come in California. we can you know we can convert one of your buses because you're you, you also said you had a bus or you're thinking about buying I one? don't have a bus. I, I just have the Mini Cooper, which is like a mini, mini, mini bus. Yeah. <laughs> it's not as cool. Um, but a friend of mine actually has a really beautiful bus that I sent you some photos of that I think yeah. you should convert. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, well, I think you know, we can get you one. We can, we can get you to spend some money yeah. and get a bus. We'll Everything, everything's money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can move to California. No, I, I'm, I'm actually coming out there to visit the guy at Hoonigan. Uh, and uh, oh, yeah. they, they stepped up and actually provided this really awesome, like, Oh, we haven't even talked about my first electric car, by the way, which is right there. Oh, I say electric. There you, there you go. Just give me a cliffhanger for next time. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was a little train. From the 1940s. Um, nice. But yeah, so whom again provided the handbrake, and then I found out later that we're not allowed to use that in our class. Oh, yeah. That's, no, that's so, market so, stuff. Yep. So, so after Pikes, that'll go in the car so we can do some rad drifting with the uh, Model 3. Um, but yeah, when I come out there to visit them, then we need to come out and play around in, I guess I should say the Volkswagen. The, Volks, the, the, Vol car. the Volkswagens. I have multiple now. Yeah. So the Vol have some yes. of the Volkswagens. All right, man. Well, <laughs> I hope you do great. Uh, do come back. Let us know. We'll, we'll keep bugging you and then you can come and talk about the other stuff because I know you have a lot of stuff going on. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> especially people who are like, what's what's up with that stain on his hat? Why, why is he wearing that? Like that that's going to be like another thing to talk about next time. <laughs> right. That's right. All right, man. Well, have a good night and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right. Thank you for joining me. Yep. Thank you, Jay. All right. Okay.